See, you and I, we can take sides on this stuff. The people making the decisions can't and absolutely shouldn't. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kolachowicz of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates. The same place you found this, and I hope you'll check those out as well. There's another week until the first preseason game. So there's a lot of time, a lot of different sessions, and even some different settings in which to evaluate players at key positions, particularly battle positions. And I am here to tell you that it doesn't matter for the most part, for the dominant part, what they do. And that includes the quarterbacks. And while I understand that there has to be a pecking order in order to properly conduct the drills and or battles at hand, there does not have to be some set in cement favorite. You know what I mean? You can't say that this guy is absolutely going to be our guy at this position. You can hope that a player who you might perceive as being more talented or having a higher ceiling wins out, but you can't ordain it. We saw what that looks like last summer when they did it with Kendrick Green and others on the offensive line. They had just made up their minds that these guys are it. And a year later, Green is number two at a different position than the one at which he was ordained. And, oh, by the way, Green admitted publicly he didn't even like playing that position at which he was ordained. This, of course, being center. You've got to watch it. You've got to have a significant measure of humility when it comes to evaluating scenarios like these. And while I, I get that this might come across as like Captain Obvious stuff, If we hadn't just experienced an entire season being flushed away for the most part because of this exact thing, I sure wouldn't be repeating it a year later. Only now, the most pivotal choice to be made is at the most important position. And that's where I think you really need to see everyone, beginning, obviously, with Mike Tomlin, kind of back off the process a little bit. You know, it's funny, Tomlin has said all of the right things related to this QB competition so far, that we're going to take it slow, we're not going to be influenced by every pass here or there. But what we haven't seen is a true rotation among these quarterbacks. We've seen Mitch Trubisky take all of the first team snaps. We've seen Mason Rudolph take almost all of the second team snaps. That sound like a battle to you? That sound like a a real competition? Who is getting better out of that circumstance? Who's being given a real chance to step up and beat out Mitch Trubisky? And most significant within that, if Mitch falters and i don't think that this is some you know impossible event based on how he's done so far which i will again underscore does not mean anything but it it still happened how will the steelers get everyone else whether it's mason rudolph or kenny pickett up to speed just like that and say hey go get him go get him cowboy as they run out of the tunnel at paul brown stadium do you see what i'm saying here i think I think there needs to be a true rotation right now at quarterback because, honestly, why not? This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying, whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best for you. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu. Do you want your projected starter to get as many reps as possible with the first team wide receivers? Yes, of course you do. 
Do you want your projected starter to become as comfortable behind his new offensive line as possible? Yes, yes, yes. However, do you want to have the right person starting at quarterback? Heck yeah. And that, heck yeah, outdoes the other two yeses many, many times over. Let's not lose sight of what actually matters here. And that's finding the right quarterback for the Steelers in 2022 and also beyond. I have advocated from the very beginning, although I'll get, uh, I'll get bit at in comments here or there about, you know, you favor this guy or you hate Mason or you hate Mitch or why don't you like Kenny or whatever else. And in fact, it just doesn't matter to me. You know, on some personal level, who's the quarterback? I'm hoping that the Steelers do everything within their power to figure that out. But I don't know that that's possible with an uneven competition. Let me throw something at you here, and I'm going to throw it at you accurately. Recently, in seven shots drills, and if you don't know what that is, that's two yards away from the goal line, you get, just like it sounds, seven shots. And either you win or the defense wins. You just count them. Simple as that. You either made it or you didn't. At one point of this camp, Trubisky failed to connect on 16 consecutive pass attempts in the seven shots drills. Now, again, say what you want about the time of year and everything else, and I'm going to repeat that I happen to believe that it means very little, very, very little. But it's all we've got. It's all we've got. And it's not exactly taking the job by the horns. Now, when Trubisky's performance through camp gets discussed by the people who like him and who want him to make it and everything else here, you'll get a lot of, well, these are excuses. Well, he hasn't had Deontay Johnson or Chase Claypool. Okay, guess who never gets Deontay Johnson or Chase Claypool if they aren't competing with the first team? Right, either Rudolph or Pickett. Well, how do you expect Trubisky to get touchdowns when he's throwing to Cody Bleeping White? Well, guess what? Cody Bleeping White is all that Rudolph and Pickett get to throw to. Do you see what I'm saying here? I'd rather see what all three of them can do. I know, I know, reps are finite. And again, there is value to having your projected starter take them, but the value is so much greater in getting this right. I, just speaking for myself here, find it way more important, infinitely more important, to see that the Steelers get it right rather than to take a side or to, you know, try to drum up some rooting interest in one guy or the other. To repeat, I, me, I don't care who wins. I just want it to be the best guy. And I don't know that the current process will allow for that to play out the way that it should or could. When we come back, J1Q. It's time for just one question, and that's brought to you always on this program by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garvin, Kelly, and George, LGKG. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents, who need assistance with workers' comp and medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG have been designated Super Lawyers, capital S, capital L, for the past 15 years. And yes, that is a real thing. The Super Lawyer designation is reserved for the top 5% of all attorneys in Pennsylvania. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. Welcome back. It's time for J1Q. And fittingly enough, today's entry comes from the United Kingdom where I'll be tomorrow. I'm going to be overseas for a week and I'll get to that in a minute here. 
Owen asks, DK, for your daily shot, is Devin Bush in danger of losing his starting spot? He is not, Owen. Uh, Terrell Austin told DK Pittsburgh Sports' Dale Lawley this week that if the season were to start right now, if they were just to be forced to take the field in Cincinnati, that the two inside linebackers would be Bush and Miles Jack. But he threw in, and no doubt deliberately, that Robert Spillane is seen by the coaching staff as being right there. Now, he might be doing that as some sort of motivational thing to make sure that both of them are doing their diligence and run-stopping with all the passion and efficiency that's required of that job. Because Spillane would be the guy that you'd want to hold up there. Not like he's some elite run stopper, but he's certainly a willing one. And as Derrick Henry can attest, an occasionally very, very dynamic one, shall we say. So that all just might be gamesmanship on the part of everybody who's involved in the coaching staff. And remember that Brian Flores is part of this mix as well. But remember that for Devin to lose his job, he'd have to get beat out by Spillane as something more than a two-down option. And I don't think you're going to see Spillane, with all due respect to what he does bring, mature into that player at any point in his life because, you know, he's got to be able to cover. And it's one thing to cover a tight end, although that can be a daunting enough assignment depending on who you're playing. It's quite another when you get stuck with somebody's slot receiver. Now, separate from all that, how has Bush looked? Well, I'm going to keep giving the same standard uh, preface to everything, which is that it really doesn't matter what he's done so far, blah, blah, blah. Most of it's in shorts, just a couple of days in pads. But, but... No one's complaining, and no one's sounding any alarms. Now, there hasn't been anyone exactly singing about him either, and if they were to be singing about him, you would not have the defensive coordinator go on the record with our website as saying that Spillane is right there, because you would have, between Jack and Bush, one guy in Jack who's an established NFL starter, and another one who was a number 10 overall pick who you wouldn't dream of taking out of your starting lineup, right? Right? Well, that's not exactly what Austin suggested, is it? So I have a feeling that it's being done for a targeted reason to get both of those players as invested as they can possibly be in supporting the front five and shutting down the run and getting rid of the defense's overall greatest weakness from 2021, that, of course, being ranked 31st against the run. Regardless of what the circumstances were, you know, that they missed Stefan Tuitt, they missed Tyson Lulu, da 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 it still happened, and it still has to change. And one of the most effective ways, I'd think, to change that would be to have a couple of inside linebackers who do way better than what we saw from Bush and Joe Schobert last year. Because that sure wasn't it. Now, for me, this is it for a little bit. I am taking my son, Marco, who's 18 years old, overseas on a bit of a pilgrimage more than a vacation. Uh, he's never been to Serbia, where my ancestors are from. I'm born and raised in Pittsburgh, but... We still have a lot of family, uncles, aunts, cousins, and so forth in the Belgrade area and just to the north of that. I haven't been able to be back in 20 years, and since he's only 18, he's never been there. We wanted to do this before the pandemic. We're going to do it now. We're flying to London later tonight. We're going to stay there for about a day and a half and then make over to Eastern Europe for the main part of the trip. This show will be back not Monday, but the following Monday. I'm taking all of next week off. Why am I doing that instead of recording shows or even doing them from over there? I'm going to be honest with you. Ever since DK Pittsburgh Sports was formed eight years ago, I took one very, very brief 
vacation with my family that encompassed five days where we puddle jumped really from Reykjavik, Iceland to London to Paris and then back to London and then back to Reykjavik and then back to Pittsburgh. It was really crazy, but it never felt like a vacation. We were just on fire all the time. This this one's going to be different. When we were in Reykjavik, when we first got there and we got to the hotel and they didn't have a room for us right away, I sat in the lobby and I opened up my laptop and my son, who was a good bit younger at the time, saw this and he started crying and he said, really, really, you're even going to work here? And I closed the laptop and I promised myself that I'd never do that again on a vacation because it's literally all I do. It's all he ever sees. It's all he's ever seen. And this is going to be different. So yeah, and I'm going to take the week off and I'm really, really going to take the week off. And you know what? When I come back, I'm going to be really, really ready to do all three of the daily shots again. Thanks so much for listening to this show. Thank you for supporting it. And we will connect again on the 15th of August. Take care of yourself. 